are you the best of protectors? So protect me. Oh, are you the best of protectors? So protect me. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله Welcome dear viewers to another episode of our series الأسماء الحسنى And so far الحمد لله we've covered many names of our majestic and glorious Lord Allah Azza wa Jal. For example, we've discussed the name Allah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Al-Malik, Al-Quddus as well. Insha'Allah, in this episode, we'll be covering another name, and that is As-Salam. And this name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, As-Salam, has been mentioned seven times in the Blessed Quran. Now, the basic meaning of As-Salam is peace, safety, for something to be safe itself or to be safe from another thing. For example, to be safe from defects within itself and to be saved from the harm of another thing as well. So this is the basic meaning of As-Salam. Now when we use the name As-Salam for Allah Azza wa Jal, the meaning is that being who is free from all defects, all flaws. When we say the name As-Salam for Allah. When it's mentioned in the Quran, for example, for Allah, or in the Hadith collection for our Lord Allah Azza wa Jal, As-Salam means the one who is free from defects and all flaws. Now once the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam was sitting, when Sayyiduna Jibreel Alayhi Salam presented himself in the noble court of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And during their conversation, Sayyidatuna Khadija radiyallahu anha, she also came. Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam at this moment said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, inform her, meaning Khadija radiyallahu anha, that Allah azza wa jal sends salam to her. And Jibreel sends salam to her as well. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam conveyed this, meaning the salam of Allah azza wa jal and the salam of Jibreel alayhi salam to Sayyidina Khadija radiyallahu ta'ala anha. Meaning, Allah Azza wa Jal and Jibreel Alayhi Salam have sent salam upon you. At that moment, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had not mentioned any rulings regarding salam. Uh, this was in Makkah al mukarramah Most of the ahkamat, the shari'i rulings were revealed in al madinatul Al-Munawwara. But look at the faqaha, look at the intelligence, look at the uh, immense discernment of Sayyidah Khadija radiyallahu ta'ala anha that when she replied, subhanAllah, she replied in the best and befitting manner. So when the salam was passed on to her, she said, alayka salam, meaning salam upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and upon him, meaning Jibreel alayhi wa sallam, alayka wa alayhi salam and this is how one ought to reply when somebody else conveys salam to them from a third party. But she did not use the same wordings for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She didn't say, and salam be upon Allah. Why? Because we know the meaning of salam is uh, to attain safety from something. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need to attain safety from anything. He is the creator, he is the khaliq, and he, as we've heard, is free from all defects and flaws as well. And she said, who was salam? Meaning, salam be upon you, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, salam be upon Jibreel alayhi salam. And as for Allah azza wa jal, he is salam. He is a salam. SubhanAllah, again, this shows the intelligence, the understanding of Sayyidah Khadija radiyallahu ta'ala anha, meaning Allah azza wa jal is salam, he is the one who grants safety to others. He is the one who protects others and not the other way around. Now, another meaning that the scholars have mentioned for salam is sulh. Now, sometimes when referring to peacemaking or reconciliation, instead of the word sulh, the word salam is used as well. So they use interchangeably in the Arabic language. When peacemaking takes place, then both parties are guaranteed safety. One party says, you are saved from my harm. The other party says, you are saved from harm coming from me. And this wasn't the case before the sulha. Before the sulha, the other person's wealth, honor, life wasn't protected, wasn't uh, safe. But once sulha has taken place, and we know sulha is in the meaning of salam, meaning safety, then 
all of these things become safe as well. In one part of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in Surah Yunus, Wallahu yad'u ila daris salam. And Allah calls you towards Darus Salam. Darus Salam means Jannah. It refers to paradise. And the scholars mention the reason why Jannah has been referred to as Darus Salam, the abode of safety. Because when a person enters Jannah, inshallah, he'll be saved from all worldly defects, worldly calamities, or worldly problems. There's going to be no illness in Jannah, inshallah. There'll be no tension in Jannah, no stress, no worry. There'll be no old age, no death as well. That's the eternal life. This is why Jannah has been referred to as Darus Salam, as paradise is free and safe from all of these worldly defects. Now, another reason why Jannah is called Darus Salam is that just as in the world, certain things are ascribed and linked to Allah Azza wa Jal for tashrif, for honor, to show the, the honor and respect of that thing. Similarly, here Jannah has been ascribed to Allah to show the, the honor and the rank of Jannah. So in the world, for example, we have Kaaba al-Musharrafa, we call it Kaabatullah, Baytullah, the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this linking here is for tashrif, to give honor to the Kaaba because it's the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Similarly, all camels belong to Allah azza wa jal. They are created by Allah azza wa jal. But in the Quran, when referring to the camel of Sayyidina Salih alayhi salam, Allah Azza wa Jal says, Naqat Allah, meaning the she camel, meaning the camel of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, because it was the camel belonging to a prophet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given it additional honor and uh, status by attributing it to himself, Jalla Jalalu, even though all camels belong to Allah Azza wa Jal. So like this, Jannah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referred to as Darus Salam, and As Salam is one of his names, so the house of uh, As Salam. And we've also discussed how uh, that meaning also implies that uh, it's a house free of all defects and illnesses as well. Now, one shari'i ruling, inshallah, before we move on. In regards to the name As Salam, which is the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, are we allowed to use this name without? prefixing Abd before it, Abdus Salam or not. Now remember there are certain names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which can be used on their own without adding Abd before it. For example, uh, Rahim. It's not necessary to keep the name Abdul Rahim. Uh, similarly, the name Kareem doesn't require Abd before it. But there are certain other names which you have to have Abd before. If you do not keep the word Abd before that name, it's not permissible for creation to keep it. For example, Abdullah, a person cannot be just called Allah. Or Rahman, on its own, Abdul Rahman is necessary. Qayyum, Abdul Qayyum. Quddus, Abdul Quddus. These are things that should always be kept in mind. The last thing we want to do is name a child, name uh, a beloved one to us, in such a way that throughout their lives, people are calling them by just Rahman or just Qayyum. And we're being sinful for it because we were the ones who gave them that name in the first place. So this knowledge has to be attained, especially at the time of the child's birth. Consult with the ulama. How long does it take? Go to your local masjid, ask your local alim or mufti. And find out whether you're allowed to keep that name or not. Inshallah. And as salam is also from these second names. Meaning you cannot call someone salam on its own. You have to say abdus salam. This is what the ulama have said. Now when we give salam to one another, when we greet one another, then the meaning is as found in Bahari Shariat and other books as well. That when we give salam to someone, what we're essentially saying that your honor, your life, your wealth, all of it is protected from me. All of it is safe from me, meaning there will be no harm reaching you from me in your wealth, in your honor, in your life. This is the meaning behind As-Salam. When we say As-Salamu Alaikum Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh. And when the person replies Wa Alaikum as Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh, he also affirms that no harm will reach you from me in your wealth, in your life, in your honor. Insha'Allah Ta'ala. This is the niyyah you should have when giving Salam. 
it shouldn't just be a rasam or uh, you know a routine or habitual thing that you say without pondering upon why you're saying it or what is the deeper meaning behind it and sometimes salam is used for a different meaning as well uh, there are different types of salam so one is salam mutaraka salam mutaraka is when uh, you are saying bye to someone or you want to leave uh, their presence um, for example when a learned person um, passes by ignorant people he is trying to convince them of the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala trying to uh, show them the error of the, their ways but they are not listening they're stubborn so in that situation when you give salam that is known as salam mutaraka the Quran mentions this وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا when the jahil people, when the ignorant folk, when they address them, those who are intelligent and learned, uh, they reply by saying as salam. Now when we use the word salam for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then one meaning as mentioned is that he is free from all defects, faults and flaws. Another meaning is that he is the one who grants safety to others. He keeps people safe. And to achieve this safety, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his infinite wisdom sometimes uses people in his creation so that safety can be attained for example when two parties go to war two people go to war they're in battle then the victor is kept safe from the harm of the defeated person similarly when an oppressor is at war with the person he oppressed and the the one that was oppressed the mazloom is dominant then that oppressed person is kept safe from the oppression of the oppressor. This is how uh, life works. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained. Now we've also been mentioning the uh, maqsad behind these names, the purpose behind these names. So, as-salam or salam. The ulama mentioned that the purpose behind the name salam is for a bondsman, a slave to humbly seek safety from the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Seek refuge in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this worldly life and the hereafter as well. Why? Because he is salam. He is the one who grants safety. Now in one hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it's mentioned that the biggest dua that you can make in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the dua of afiyah, well-being, safety, peace. This is something that we should always say, Ya Allah, Allahumma inni as'aluka al-afwa, Allahumma inni as'aluka al-afiyah, O Allah, I ask you for afi, I ask you for well-being, I ask you for safety and peace. The scholars have mentioned two types of well-being, safety, peace. One is the outer, one is the inner. So the outer, that Ya Allah keep us safe from illnesses, for example. This is an outer form of afiyah. That Ya Allah save us from illnesses, save us from calamities, save us from worries and tensions. And then there is the inner form of afiyah. And this is what we should also ask for in, from the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is afiyah, safety and well-being from disbelief, from falling into disbelief. Or having weak belief, having doubts regarding belief and iman. Safety from innovations, bid'at. Safety from sins. So these are all forms of inner afiyah. And we should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for these. This was all to do with the world. But the Akhirah, we should also seek Afiyah as well. From Allah Azza wa Jal, who is Salam, who is the one who grants safety. What kind of Afiyah are we referring to? Ya Allah, save me from the fire of hell. Save me from punishment in the hereafter. This is what we should pray for. Ya Allah, send us to paradise. Ya Allah, grant us well-being by granting us salvation from the hellfire and punishment and admit us, enter us into your paradise. One implication of the word salam or safety here is that a Muslim is safe from another Muslim and this is mentioned in a famous hadith a Muslim is he from whose tongue and his hand another Muslim is safe from and we should try to do this to our utmost to ensure that no harm reaches another person through our tongue or through our hands now here this does not mean at all that we can harm someone using our foot because the foot isn't mentioned in the hadith what the hadith is trying to say or the sharh of the hadith, the scholars of hadith have said that majority of the times when another person is harmed, when harm reaches him, it's through either the tongue or the hand, mostly. But any form, any sort of harm is disallowed to, uh, whether that's with your hand, whether that's with your tongue, whether that's with your feet, 
for any other limb of your body as well. Now, Alhamdulillah, the blessing of this name, Salam, is also mentioned in another hadith where we're taught how to greet our fellow Muslims. Uh, what should we say when we greet another Muslim? Now, every qawm, every nation has their way of uh, greeting. So in English, people say, hi, hello, how are you, welcome. In other languages, there are other uh, word forms that are used. But for Muslims, the Arabic word salam is used. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said, As-salamu tahiyyatun li millatina. As-salam is the greeting of our nation, meaning the Muslim nation. This is our greeting. This is how we greet one another. Similarly, Sayyidun Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu anhuma mentions that salam is the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which he has placed on the earth. So you should spread this name. And there's a hadith to this effect. That لا تدخل الجنة حتى تؤمنوا. You will not enter Jannah until you believe. ولا تؤمنوا حتى تحابوا. And you will not believe until you love one another. ألا أدلكم على شيء إذا فعلتموه. Should I not indicate upon something? Should I not inform you of something that if you were to do it, تحاببتم. You will love one another. أفشوا السلام بينكم. You should spread salam between you. So, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. This is the greeting of a Muslim. And we should not discard this greeting. This is our honor. This is our pride. This is the way of a Muslim. Assalamu tahiyyatun li millatina. When we meet others, we shouldn't hesitate. And today, so many uh, informal words are used, slang is used. But this, the beautiful way of Islam, should never be discarded because there is khair and barakah in this way insha'Allah ta'ala blessing of Allah that when we give salam to another person love increases love blossoms alhamdulillah ta'ala and this is from the rights of a Muslim the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that from the rights of a Muslim is that you greet him when you meet him and that he should reply to you as well this is from the hukuq the rights of a Muslim so we will conclude by saying that this is a beautiful name of Allah salam and you've heard the many meanings that when it refers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it means that entity that being who is free from all defects, all flaws and faults. And when it refers to Jannah, it means the abode that is safe from all weaknesses, all calamities, all defects. When a person enters Jannah, he will not fall ill, he will not age, he will not uh, have any tension or worry. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has referred to Jannah as Darus Salam. We've also heard how Salam, uh, this is the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we should spread on the earth. We should greet one another by using the word As Salam. Assalamu alaikum. And when we do that, we should have the intention that this person who I am greeting, my fellow Muslim, his mal, his wealth, his life, his honor, everything is protected from me. Everything is safe from me. I will not harm him in these things in any way. So inshallah, until the next episode, stay safe. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us safety. And we should always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for afiyah in his blessed court. Until the next time, may Allah bless all the Muslims. Amin bijahi nabil amin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Oh Allah, you're the best of protectors, so protect me. Oh Allah, you're the best of protectors, so protect me.